I was the first person in my group that took my scalpel and made an incision. All right, what's up you guys? Rex here. And so today is August 27th and I'm driving back from getting COVID tested again. Um, just a side note, um, they uh, are doing like random testing of all the medical students. And I think everyone on campus throughout the year. And so this is just monitoring, which is great. And they actually now are doing the self-administered tests. And I'd be curious to look up what the accuracy um, of this test compared to the deeper nasal pharyngeal swab. Um, I'd be curious, but yeah, so this was super easy. Not really gonna talk about that. What I wanna talk about today is actually just reflecting a little bit on my first experience yesterday in anatomy lab. And so yesterday was the first day I really saw my cadaver. I had previously gone and helped take my cadaver and go get a CT scan of it. So I guess I have seen the more internal anatomy of my donor before I actually saw, um, I guess my donor in person, I guess if that makes sense. Um, and so it was, it was an interesting experience. I guess I didn't have any real like emotions with it as far as I wasn't off put by it. I know some people have sort of negative reactions. That's kind of interesting seeing someone who is deceased for the first time and seeing a donor that's deceased for the first time like that. Um, I didn't really have anything like that. I think that Duke has done an awesome job of sort of explaining their um, donor program and that historically there, there definitely has been a lot of very unethical things that have gone on surrounding the study of anatomy and cadavers as far as you go back to the 1600s or whatever. I don't know the actual historical context fully, but I know at some points there was doctors and scientists and anatomists who were basically just robbing graves or were getting cadavers from prisons and stuff like that, or people that prisoners or criminals that were executed and would just totally against their will use their body for science and use it as a means of study. Um, where the prisoner may have maybe had no chance to consent to it or even knew about it. But Duke's donor program and pretty much every, I probably imagine literally every single cadaver lab in the United States, hopefully through most of the modern world is only using cadavers that have been donated through ethical means. And so Duke really explained that up front that these cadavers come from donors who very much not just like willingly, but went out of their way to have their body donated to science and specifically donated to Duke University to be used for educational or scientific purposes. And that most of these donors are people that either have significant connections or ties to Duke University or received treatment and care at Duke University and really felt that they received outstanding care and that they wanna give back to ensure that the next generation is trained or that further study can be done upon their cadaver so that further advances can be made. So even better care can be done to people in the future. And so I definitely, just as, as a personal value system, I very much will always think that people's last will and testament should always be honored and you should go out of your way as much as possible to honor that, whether that's how their financial estate is carried out or how their remains are handled once they pass away. And so I got to see my cadaver and, and there, I didn't really have any hesitancy of that first time I was, I was the first person in my group that took my scalpel and made an incision. And it was, it was not at all like a thing I hesitated about. It was like, I am doing what this person wanted. I would be doing a total disservice to this donor if I didn't dive head first into this opportunity to learn that they have given me this great privilege of being able to experience and that I owe it to my donor to be excited every day I go into anatomy lab, to 
absolutely try my best and, and learn as much as I can from this opportunity they've given me. And so my first experience was super exciting. I wasn't shy or squeamish at all about um, dissecting my cadaver. And that's because I'm honoring my donor's wishes. I obviously have to do that. And so it was really cool to, to get to experience this. And it's something that's made me in this current time period immensely thankful to be at Duke where I know a lot of medical schools have either gone away from cadaveric dissections where either they're prosected cadavers where someone else has dissected it and you just look at it. Some have gone all the way to just virtual dissections, but even more so with the pandemic going on, there's a lot of medical schools that are totally online. Duke is pretty much online except for our anatomy labs and a couple other in-person activities. But I guess our administration really vied to have in-person anatomy labs because they really saw the value of it. And I absolutely agree uh, so far on my sample size of one anatomy lab that I got to experience things and learn things in a way that would not be replicated by seeing a prosected cadaver, would not be replicated by seeing pictures online. It's really important to get to touch and feel the human anatomy. And so I'm just incredibly thankful for my donor and I really hope I honor them and, and really live out through my learning experience what they hoped to do by donating their body. And so I guess just, I'm already really thankful to them and I look forward to all that they have to teach me and it's really exciting. Yeah, so that was my first experience in anatomy lab and my first experience seeing a cadaver and my first experience dissecting a cadaver. Cool time, really great time to be in medicine whenever I get to do that. So yeah, that was my first experience. Uh, let me know down below if any of you have gotten the privilege and opportunity to take part in the dissection of a cadaver or if that's something you're worried about, anxious about, nervous about if you're going to medical school sometime in the future, how you'll experience it. I'd be curious to know. Maybe I'm the majority of people are super excited like I am. Maybe the majority are a little bit more nervous and hesitant. But yeah, don't be nervous about the idea of learning something new or jumping into the unknown. It's always a cool time. All right. If you want to hear more reflections like this, be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, like the video if you liked the video, dislike it if you disliked it. Till next time, don't be ordinary, go be great.